Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Welcome back. Today, day 18 of the 30-Day Profit Challenge. I want to thank you for being here today. Man, I, I, I was like just observing this morning. It's already sunny out here in Calgary. And uh, when we started this challenge not 18 days ago, it was still dark out when we were starting these in the morning. So it just goes to show you how fast the time is changing. It's spring is here. It's really good feeling fresh, feeling energetic, ready to tackle today. So thank you for being here. Again, today we've been going through... Uh, 30 days of this profit challenge and trying to get to know more about your business in e-commerce and how to generate more profit out of that business. Today, what we're going to do is we've been going through a series of your conversion funnel. And today we're going to dive in a little bit deeper into the conversion funnel and talk a bit about browsers and converting those people into actual shoppers. So yesterday we looked at they were visitors and maybe starting to browse around for products. But today, how do we get those people to actually truly start shopping for products? So we're going to dive into a little bit deeper and just get to know some of the numbers and get to know how you can measure that in your conversion funnel. So without further ado, we will start the PowerPoint slides here. So just give me a second here. All right. And so, yeah, as I mentioned today, today is day 18. We're getting into what we call browsers versus shoppers. And what we want to understand is how do we take them down further into the funnel? So as we've been looking over the last couple of days, you know, we've got our conversion funnel here of visitors that are visiting web pages. But today we're looking at browsers and shoppers in terms of how they're getting further down into your shopping funnel. Tomorrow we'll look at the buyers and then the next couple of days we'll look at spenders and finally customers so that you can understand the whole entire conversion funnel. Now you may be wondering why am I going through these sort of minutiae details around my shopping funnel? It should just have all customers, right Blair? Well, as we looked at the last couple of days, conversion rates on your website are only really, you know, if you're lucky, two to three percent of all people that start at the top and get all the way to the bottom. And so the reason why we're going through each of these individual details is to understand, well, why do you have such a high abandonment rate or what we call, a nine, it's 97% or high abandonment rate off of your website. And so what we're finding is, is that if you start breaking it down between your visitors to browsers, your browsers to shoppers, shoppers to buyers, buyers to spenders, at each of those individual steps of the conversion funnel, there's opportunities to understand the numbers and understand maybe that if you could make a few points on the visitors to browsers conversion or from browsers to shoppers conversion, that's gonna yield you more people at the bottom of the funnel. And so that's why we're gonna keep going through all the individual parts of this conversion funnel and help you understand how to measure it and how to track it for your own e-commerce conversion funnel. So just to familiarize yourself with who the kind of people we're talking about yesterday, you know, I'll go back to this sort of example store that we were using as a Shopify theme and picture this, you know, imagine someone has come to your website and they are shopping around and they're looking at your website. So they've come to the first page of your web page. They're really just not even really to shop yet. They maybe just have heard about you from a blog post or from a webinar or from an ad, or maybe they just heard about you from word of mouth, but they're really just coming to visit your website. Maybe they're going to poke around and go visit your story, maybe about the people, blogs, maybe even some FAQs perhaps your shipping policies or your return policies, some of the things we talked about in the other, other few lessons related to order margin tree. And so long story short, you know, you really haven't converted them yet into being someone who's browsing for your products. And I liken this as if you were in a shopping mall in a bricks and mortar context, your store is just sitting there and people are walking by the store, but they haven't really made a conscious effort to come in and look at the store yet. So you have to put, be putting product in front of them. And that's why I encourage a lot of retailers to put some product images or even getting people to start shopping right from the homepage. So if I click shop now, that's gonna convert me now into becoming a browser. So now I'm starting to look at a few products in the store. And if you had product in your storefront, or maybe you had uh, people, yeah, it's a window glass that you could actually put some models and you've seen this traditionally in the good old school shopping malls where you've got mannequins with clothes on them that are actually things you can come and buy in the store right so you've now converted those people to come in and start looking around maybe they go to the women's department or the men's department or in this case the accessories department you know as they've made their way into the store now they've become a browser and so now you've got people interested in products so you want to showcase products to them that obviously make sense for people now in this sort of theme or example, we're showing a few different products to the customer, but obviously there's ones here that says it's sold out or showing this crossed out one that, that you know, 
that uh, looks like it's sold out as well. So, you know, in a, you may want to do that. You may not want to do that. I think it really depends on if that's a product that you're going to bring back into stock. Maybe that's a good thing. But obviously, you want to get people to be clicking on these images or on these added carts or buy it now. So you can see there's some very clear connection points of what you want people to do next in terms of viewing the products. So if I click to see the few bit more details around this bracelet, I'm now on what we call a product detail page. And now I'm a shopper. So think of this as someone has actually gone to looking at this in the store. They've maybe pulled it up off the shelf or maybe it was hanging on a, a rack. And now they're starting to look at the product and trying to get a bit more information about the product. Maybe they're looking at some of the details. In this case, maybe they're flipping through the colors or perhaps they're uh, looking at the, the different options they can get for it. Uh, you know, maybe there's some other images that you have that you could cycle through here as well. So long story short, you now have a shopper. And so a shopper is someone who obviously you can now provide the product to and who's a little bit more interested in, in your particular product. So how does the math work for this? So, you know, yesterday we looked at some funnel, conversion funnel rates and how to calculate your traffic to product view conversion rate. Or, you know, I've rephrased it say is your traffic to product impression rate because I realized after the fact that the Google Analytics example I showed you didn't quite have the same terminology to line up here. So what I'm showing you today is your traffic to product impression conversion rate, which is 50%. Now today, what we talked about, if we go a little bit deeper, we're gonna look at those category pages and those becoming shoppers. And so if we look at deeper into the funnel, we've got some browsers that are now turning into shoppers. And what we look at that and how we measure that is what we call our product impression to product view conversion rate, which is 50%. So you notice I just kind of moved this product impression in here and the product view because now, as we saw in that example, I've actually viewed a, a specific product. I went and looked at this bracelet. So what we're gonna look at today is, is the math behind how to calculate your own conversion rate from browser to shopper. And then from shopper, previously, all the way to visitors. So on the left-hand side, what we're showcasing here is your shoppers to browsers conversion rate, which is pretty simple math. You're looking at 250,000 shoppers, over 500,000 browsers, which nets you a 50% conversion rate. But a lot of times when you're working through your conversion funnel, we're starting to look at the cumulative effect of what that to build towards that 3% of the overall conversion rate. And so in this scenario, what we're trying to then look at is back to the top where we looked at the, and I realized this is backwards, it should say shoppers over visitors, my apologies. But basically what you're, you're showcasing here is you should have 250,000 shoppers over the 1 million visits that came to your website. So now you're getting a bit of a compounding factor and it's, it's working in a bit opposite when we looked at some of the math previously and some of the other lessons. But basically what you're showcasing is you've got 250,000 visit shoppers that have become to your website over the 1 million visitors to get to 25%. And so as we you see, as we work through the funnel, that percentage is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller to arrive at the bottom overall conversion rate from top to bottom. And so what we're showcasing here is that cumulative effect of what a visit to shopper looks like. So now we looked at yesterday in Google Analytics, a report that allows you to go and showcase the, all the different steps in your conversion funnel. And so this is where we line up now with our product session views. So we looked at all the sessions that are in a particular website or e-commerce store and the amount of people that actually get to viewing a specific product. And so there's a step in between that isn't reflected in these reports, but you can get to it in some other reports. But from the visualization, you know, what, what this is showcasing is out of all the total 53,924 people that visited this particular web store, 10,392 or basically 19% of those people got to see an actual product. And so that's very similar to the product views, sort of product, sort of product impression to product views formula we just looked at. And so in this case, this is 19%. So a little bit below that sort of benchmark of 50 and 50 or you know, 250 over 1 million. But you can see here that the math is very similar now. And as we look at some of these other steps in future days, you'll see how we're able to get to that total conversion rate. So again, that is kind of in a nutshell, how we look at converting from browsers into shoppers on your e-commerce funnel. Tomorrow, we're gonna look at how we take those shoppers and get a little bit deeper. And how do we get them to add to cart and now become a spender? They're ready to spend some money with us. And so we'll go in a little bit more detail and dive one step further into that conversion funnel. So with that, I thank you for being here today. Really appreciate you being here. 
And as always, I ask you to be present today, connect with others, and make an impact in someone's life today. I'll pause the recording now, and uh, I will take any questions from anyone that they may have on this beautiful spring day.